Alrighty, we are officially started. Um, welcome to the ETIX training for theater. Um, my name is Sue Calwell. I am a FCPS employee. I work in the financial support team that is part of financial services in the office of the comptroller. Um, my colleague uh, AC, Anant Chawan, is also with us tonight. He will be doing part of the presentation as well. Our two teams um, are the teams that really provide all the support and the training for ETICs, both on the process side with the ticket sellers and the theater teachers, as well as on the equipment side. We also have Alyssa Newell here from ETICs, and we will open um, the session up a couple of times this evening to questions. And if any of your questions are really more directed towards ETICs in general, um, we have Alyssa here. And probably all of you, most of you anyway, know Tara Taylor. She is here joining us in case we have questions that um, are best answered on by her. Um, so what I'm going to do tonight is I have a presentation. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to walk through the presentation. And that's Alyssa waving. Hello, Alyssa. Um, I will turn it over to AC at one point so he can talk to you more about the equipment and those types of things. What we're going to do is um, we'll go through the presentation, the equipment part. We'll go through the whole ticket selling portion. And then I will pause. And if you are simply a ticket seller, a volunteer, and you want to leave and drop off the call, that's perfectly fine. I will have another section that's more geared towards the theater directors, the theater teachers, um, in terms of you and what you need to know, your reporting requirements, and uh, setting up your performances. So we'll do it that way so that the volunteers can drop off at, at that point if they want to. <clears throat> so let me go ahead and share my screen. Um, if you do have questions this evening, there is a chat function <clears throat> on the Google Meet over kind of in the bottom. You'll see a little, um, looks like a little speech bubble. You can also just unmute yourself and speak up and ask a question. And I think there might also be a hand raising um, option too as well in Google Meet. So any of those, feel free to do that. Just break in, interrupt if you have any questions at any time. So, like I said, this is kind of the agenda that we'll go through this evening. Um, we're going to go through what your equipment is. AC will talk you through that. We're going to look at the ETIX uh, site and what that looks like. Um, sorry, every time I click that little button, it goes, my thing goes off the screen. Um, <clears throat> we're going to go look at what we call the knowledge base, the patron experience. That is what your um, people that are purchasing your tickets what they see, and then the box office tour review. That's really the important part of ticket selling. That's going to show you what you're going to see when you're actually the night of your production selling tickets, what it's going to look like, how you're going to uh, have those tickets purchased, the you know buttons you're going to click, et cetera, and then reporting requirements. There's a little report <clears throat> that the ticket seller will run at the end of the night, and then there's some additional reports that the theater teachers will run. And then we'll talk about the performance sites. That's really where the teacher, the theater teacher, um, gets involved to set up your shows and your performances in eTix. Um, and then we'll have some question and answers. We'll also have a time for questions before I let all of the volunteer go volunteers go, just in case you know we haven't gotten to your questions. All righty. So at this point, um, AC, I'm actually going to mute myself and I'll turn it over to you. All right. Thank you, Sue. Um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the equipment. Um, all of you will have the equipment at your schools at this point. So um, some of the things that you can expect um, with your setups, like with the equipment, you'll have um, three laptops, three credit card readers, three printers, four hand scanners, and you'll have a MiFi device, which connects it to the internet, and that will, um, that kind of makes everything work together. So let me share my screen. And so I can show you what the setup looks like.
Okay. So this is the um, this is your setup. This is one setup that you'll have. Oh, you also get mice and the mice pad as well. But you'll have your printer, um, your laptop, the credit card reader, um, and then <clears throat> the what's pictured. What you don't see in this uh, that you'll also have is the uh, MiFi device and the hand scanners. Yes, this is the same equipment um, we had from last year, the exact same. Uh, the, the usernames we've put on the laptops. So to the right of the, the, um, the mouse pad on the laptop, you'll see the usernames for your schools. So you can just use that username when you're logging into the eTIC site. Um, those are the ticket seller logins as well that you'll see. Um, <clears throat> A couple of things about the equipment. You will need to um, run updates on the equipment. You'll need to plug up everything, get it charged. Um, you'll need to run uh, the Windows updates on there, um, as well as the Lenovo updates. Um, you can also uh, seek the help of your T-Specs at the schools. We have talked to the senior T-Specs, um, and the T-Specs at the schools sh are supposed to help you um, get this equipment set up and ready. Um, if you have any, if you have any issues with that, just let me know. I can also help you, you know, with getting it updated, with getting it set up. Um, the equipment also has folders that we um, that we create, like we put these folders together that have um, that show you how to troubleshoot the equipment, how to put it together, um, how to reset the passwords. It has everything that you need to know about. Um, all of the equipment that you'll be using to sell tickets. So definitely um, locate those folders. Hopefully they're um, with the equipment. If you do not have those folders, um, just reach out to me. I'll put my uh, email in the chat and I can send you the packet, the PDFs that you'll need. Um, <clears throat> when you're, um, after the equipment has been updated, um, you're gonna need to log into the eTech site um, so you can run at least a, a test ticket with the printers. I would definitely, um, you know, encourage you to do that. Um, if you don't remember the passwords from last year, um, you're not going to be able to get into the eTIC site with your ticket seller login. So um, just reach out to me as well. I can reset your um, your passwords, and then I will email you your new passwords. And then just remember, they reset every three months. So, um, <clears throat> uh, one of the issues that we ran into when we were restarting the program after COVID, do the secondary schools have the same passwords for high school and middle school? Uh, no, they do not. Um, it is whatever the uh, high school teachers set the password for their equipment, and the middle school has their own equipment, and it's whatever the middle school teacher set it for that equipment or the ticket sellers at that time. Um, the we ran into an issue um, when we were coming out of COVID and when we were restarting um, the theater program and the etix you know um, theater program selling tickets that some of the laptops were having um, faulty batteries the batteries would not hold a charge you could still use the equipment as long as the um, you know they were plugged in with the chargers you could still use the laptops um, just fine but once you unplugged it they were not holding a charge. So if you do run into that situation, we um, we got most of those laptops exchanged already. But if you come across that problem again when you're um, getting your equipment set up to start this year, um, again, reach out to me. Um, I will get we have a, a program in place where we can get FedEx to drop off the the packaging materials at your school. Um, you guys can package up the laptops and then slap on the new label, which will also be in the box, and then um, notify me when it's ready to pick up, and then FedEx will come by and pick it up as well. So that's kind of um, what you'll need to know about the equipment to get started. Um, does anybody have any questions? Yes, Colleen. Uh, yeah, last year we had a lot of trouble with the scanners at Centerville High School and they would not work. 
Um, so I didn't know if it, any tips for how to, I don't know, calibrate them or to, I don't know if there's something we need to do, but they were not working. If, um, if your ticket seller, you or your parent volunteer, whoever is going to be. Um, yeah, I'm the parent volunteer. <laughs> okay. 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 If you want to reach out to me, then okay. what I can do is we can, um, I'll work with you on getting it um, set up to where, you know, we'll get some, you know, positive readings. If I remember Centerville from where you were selling your tickets to where your um, gate is or your doors are was a good bit of distance no it's actually it's right like we're right inside the front doors you're right inside the front doors uh -huh. yeah do you normally have any cell issues in that area uh we didn't have any problems with the e uh, selling the tickets no we just have problems I, I, using the scanners. i think if at one point there was problems with connecting the scanners directly to the mi yeah we, we, yeah it wasn't working yeah, I, th I do think that was. They've got this little cove. It's not a far distance AC, but it is like a little cove where the auditorium is. And mm -hmm. so I do think there was some issues at that point connecting the scanner specifically to the MiFi device. Okay. Um, you know, we can, uh, I can work with you. I can come okay. out there um, That'd be great. and meet with you and we could uh, try to figure that problem out. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, there was another chat. I do just want to jump in. The, the, the goal is to enter all tickets and to scan. If there's a huge issue, the most important thing is to enter all tickets sold into uh, the box office. That's the most important thing for accounting purposes. The scanning is secondary and best practices, but really the most important thing is that we get, to get that ticket inventory into the box office. Is that right, Sue? Yes. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Um, at that point, if yeah, you're just gonna kind of have to eyeball it sometimes if you are having interference with the scanners, just to take a look at the ticket and make sure it's the right night. Yeah, a lot of the uh, if the schools have had that issues in the past, they've just checked tickets or checked phones as people enter, so they make sure that that person does have a ticket at entry, and they have them show that every time. So maintain those tickets. Let people know if the scanners are not working. Um, but, but just so you have a practice in case they do not work. Yeah. If you're running into some big issues though, I can work with you. I can come out there and work with you. AC, did you have another slide you wanted to show? No, no, I'm good. Okay. Okay. And it, this other slide here is really kind of an iter reiteration of what AC just talked to you about in terms of the usernames, um, the passwords, and to just remember for the theater teachers, they will expire every three months. So if you can keep those updated, um, then you know you won't have to have him reset them. But if you are just getting on for the first time this school year and your passwords have expired, just reach out to AC because he can uh, reset the password for you. I also have a list of uh, the new teachers that will need access to eTix. So um, I'll be working with you on getting your access to the system. So I can get you set up. Any other questions on the um, equipment components? All righty. Um, oh, yeah. This slide is. Um, oh. oh, yes, yes. AC will put his email address in the chat. There it is right now. Um, this slide is really just to show you we do have a training database. This is what we use. Um, you are welcome to log in there if you want to play around, but if you have any trouble, you need to email me. I'm actually going to put my email um, in here as well because if you have trouble with the um, uh, training event that I set up in there because maybe the time period is in, is expired to actually sell tickets. We may need to to do something. Um, there's no requirement that you go in here and do anything, um, but just to let you know it's available. So the second bullet shows you the organization of how things are set up within ETIX. So within ETIX, the organization for us is Fairfax County Public Schools. We are all in one sort of um, uh, 
group together all schools, high schools, middle schools, theater, athletics, other activities, all within the FCPS ETIX umbrella. Underneath that organization level are individual venues. The venue is what is specific to either theater or other activities or athletics and middle school or high school. And as AC mentioned earlier, for somebody who asked a question about a secondary school, we have separate venues for them for middle and high school because they do have their own set of productions. So um, in ETIX, you will have your own venue. You will go into that venue. And we do want the theater teachers to make sure that they can log in with their regular FCPS EDU password. Again, if you're brand new this year, AC has a list of those. We may need to still get you your access, but we'll take care of that. But you would log in with your regular FCPS.edu email as your user ID. If you haven't been in, in, in a while, your password may have expired. So you may need to reset that. And again, if you have trouble resetting that, again, reach out to AC. He can do a reset and you'll get an automatic email to take care of that. <clears throat> so the next slide I'm gonna show you is just some slides of what eTix itself looks like, but then I'm also gonna break and I'm gonna, at some point, I'm gonna actually go into eTix live, but let me show you the slides first. So when you actually log into eTix, um, this is what one of the screens looks like when you're in a particular venue. So over on the um, left side, you'll see where it says high school training venue. And in your case, it would say, for instance, Centerville High School Theater. Um, and then listed right at the front are all of your performances. Over on the far right is a little question mark. And if you click that, you'll get a little pop-up box. And one of the things that's in that list is the knowledge base. In the knowledge base, just in case you would need it that night, you can't find any information um, in your folders or you're panicking and you can't get a hold of anybody, that knowledge base has a lot of helpful guides with screenshots that step you through a lot of the issues. You just go in and search on you know whatever topic you want. Um, most of the things that you will need, especially for troubleshooting equipment and things like that, that's what actually AC has in those folders, the hard copies. So probably you'll have what you need in terms of those helpful hints, but this is where they're coming from. Most of them are coming from this knowledge base, which eTix has put together. <clears throat> Um, this information here, it's in this PowerPoint, but it's also in that eTix knowledge base under the contact area. Um, if you need help on the night of the performance, there is a phone number and then there is an after hours emergency number. So if your system is crashing or something's happening that you can't fix and you're you know, in a panic, they do have help that they can get to you. You may have to leave a message and have someone call you back. There is a pager, there's emails. Um, this, we're gonna talk later to the theater teachers about your setup and getting your events into eTix. But I wanted you to see right here, this client services at etix.com is that email address that you would send that information into. This is a slide showing you what it looks like from the patron's view. So if you have a patron, a parent, somebody wanting to buy a ticket and they go out to your, to your venue, it's going to show what's available for that venue for whichever your school is. And you'll see a green button that says get tickets. They would just have to click on that and they could purchase their tickets. We have, um, and you probably all have that through Tara, we have a link that we have created or actually made into a QR site for all of the theater venues so that you can all use that same QR site. And what happens when the patron uh, navigates to that using that QR site or the link, they get a site that has a list of all of the schools. They then go and click the school that they want and then they would get a, a screen much like the one you're seeing where they can see the different performances are out, that are out there. So as soon as your uh, events are loaded into eTix, oops, and Tara, Tara just put it. So as a matter of fact, let me just actually click on that. So the link that Tara just sent 
is right here. I just clicked on it and it came right up in Google. Well, that's my default browser. And you can see we have all of your theater venues. We did this to make it easy. This is the same link as last year and it just updates. So I'm going to just pick Annadale. I don't know if they have any shows right now. So let me just see if they do. If not, I'll ask if anybody does. No. Nope. Chantilly um, should have theirs up. Try Chantilly. Okay, Chantilly. There you go. Yeah. Perfect. So this is what a patron is going to see. They're, they would get that whole theater list. They'd pick their school. They'd go to that school and then they can see what all is available and what nights are there. And then all they have to do is say get tickets. What we want to encourage is as many people as possible purchasing online ahead of time because that avoids anything you need to do at the box office. They come in with the ticket on their phone. Now, they can always print it at home if they want to, and if they do that, they'll get a piece of paper. They'll bring with a barcode, and your scanners would scan that piece of paper. When we first started eTix, we had a few people doing that. I don't think we have very many doing that any longer. Most people bring it on their phones, but what will happen is they'll get their tickets on their phone, and each ticket will have a barcode, and the, whoever is at your um, door with that scanner, they'll just scan that barcode, and it'll be you know, positive that they can get in. It'll show red and give an error if it's maybe a ticket for the wrong night. Okay. If someone buys multiple tickets on their phone, they'll have a separate ticket for each one that they purchase. So if they bought, let's say, four different tickets for four people in the family, when they go to the door, they'd have the first ticket scanned. They would just swipe, go to the next ticket, swipe, next ticket, swipe, and each one would be scanned individually. Okay, what some schools do, <clears throat> and this is um, done heavily in athletics, whether you do this in theater or not is up to you, but what some schools do is they will put um, a, like a big kind of one of those folding boards right at the, the door with the QR code so that patrons who didn't purchase ahead online can still come with their phone and actually purchase right there from the parking lot, from right before they go in the door, you know, right at the entrance to the school, purchase their tickets, and then they'll have their ticket and they do not have to buy a ticket at the box office. Okay. And then Tara also put in the chat, you can see on the FCPS website, we have a performing arts calendar, which links directly to that site so that you can get your tickets or so they can get their tickets. Oops. Alrighty. Now this screen right here is what you're going to see in eTix when you actually go to sell tickets. This is just in the presentation. I'm going to actually in a few minutes take you into eTix live into the selling uh, training, um, the training site, and actually demonstrate what it's going to look like to sell some tickets. But I wanted you to see what this site looks like. Okay. Um, so actually, let me just do that right now. Go back over here. to. Um, you'll notice here it says session expired because I had logged in earlier. There is a time limit when you are logged into eTix. So when you um, first log in for the evening when you go to sell your tickets. If you let too much time expire and you're going idle, you may have to re-log in. No issue, you just log back in. So on those laptops that AC showed you, there's going to be a little icon or a, um, a quick thing you can just click that'll take you directly to the eTix site. So we have a little um, a thing right on the desktop that you can just double click and open up eTix. And so when you log in to those laptops, you are each logging in, not as yourselves, but as a generic um, ticket seller user ID. So there's three laptops per school and each one has its own login. And that's what AC showed on the actual body of the laptop right beside the little mouse um, pad on the laptop. It'll tell you your username. So as the ticket seller, you're going to open up that laptop, go into eTix and log in as that ticket seller. Okay. You will need to have the password. It should be there in the folder. And that's what we want all the theater teachers or whoever's you know, in charge of checking this, check this ahead of time before the night to make sure you have a valid password and that it hasn't expired because they do expire um, every three months. Once you get into eTix, you're gonna spend your evening 
on the ticket selling page. When you first get to this page right here, if there's multiple performances, you see down here in this lower section where I have upcoming, I only have one because this is training. But if I was in a site where I had maybe a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday show, I would have four. So we're going to go into that performance. You can also, over here on the top right, you can go directly up and click this sell button that's green. So when you first come in, you can do either of those. The sell has a couple of options. For what you're doing, we're going to have you choose venue POS. Now you can do venue POS quick sale. However, if you sell tickets to specific seats in your theater, your, in your auditorium, you want to make sure you use Venue POS. So we pretty much for theater just have you and train you to go into Venue POS. That's the main difference. The screen setup looks a little different between the two, but it's the same functionality. So I chose the Venue POS, and this is my ticket selling screen. This looks similar to the slide that I showed you a little while ago. It is going to default right here. If you can see there's this drop down, it's going to default to the most current show that you have available to sell tickets to. So the first time you go in that first night, you just want to double check to make sure, okay, it's Wednesday night, it's October 19th, that's the show I'm selling tickets to. Then the rest of the evening, it's just going to stay on that show. It should default to the one that you're on for that day, but you might want to just double check that when you first go in. So when you're selling tickets, it's going to um, initially set you here at this best available um, tab. If you are selling tickets by individual seats, then you're going to need to go to this sell by map. Now this particular um, training thing. We do not have a setup or an auditorium layout here. So let me just show you. I grabbed a picture off of, um, off of actually the knowledge base that you can see in this little picture, this sell by map. Make this a little bigger. This is um, a, a school. This is a, a picture of what it would look like if you were going to sell tickets by particular seats. So if you are, you would just click into where you want to purchase your seats and click the seat numbers that the patron wanted to purchase. If they don't care and they're just buying tickets, or if you don't have specific seats, you just have general admission, then you're going to go and use this best available option. If you are selling assigned seats, you would have to get your seating charts, basically, um, to um, e so that they can load that. That's a one-time thing. You don't have to do that every year unless you have a change. And you'd work with e if you want to have certain seats blocked off. For instance, your sound equipment maybe is in the middle of the auditorium, or you have certain seats that are handicap accessible that you don't want to sell. Various things like that. You would just work with e to get this loaded into the system, and then it's there, and it will stay there for your venue. <clears throat> So in the training environment, because we don't have a seating chart, we're just going to use the best available. So you have a patron that comes to your box office and you're selling them a ticket. You have two main first questions. One is how many tickets and are they paying cash or credit? Now, whether you have adult and student prices differentiated is up to your school. If you do and your student price is different, um, and you, or, and or you just want to keep track of student versus adults, one of the things you're going to want to let your ticket seller know is what is that age? What, what is a student? Is a student somebody who has started school, maybe kindergarten through 12th grade, uh, preschool? So just make sure your ticket sellers know kind of what you mean by student. Um, if you have a senior ticket price or a senior ticket option, you might have that. On this screen, you'll see we have a booster option. Booster would be somebody who has worked with your or bought um, a package through your booster group outside of eTix. But because they have purchased this package through the booster, they can get in for free. However, you need to record them coming in and they need to have a ticket to be scanned into the show. So the booster option here is a zero dollar ticket but it allows the patron to get a ticket to be scanned into the show. And then we have the TADA. 
The Tada is, I believe, Tara, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's when you have other theater teachers from other schools that come and are able to get in. That's, excuse me, that's correct. So the Tada is, is built so we can help support our community and share um, ideas with each other. So every theater teacher, FCPS theater teacher, gets two free tickets per show uh, using the Tada code. So they just say Tada, and that's how they redeem those tickets, either online or in person. Okay, so then what they would do is purchase that ticket here for zero dollars again. You still want to give them the ticket so they have something to scan to get in for the night. So another thing I wanted to show you is you'll notice I have adult student cash on the left, adult student credit on the right. Over on the left side of this screen, this is where you're selecting your tickets. On the right side is where you're going to select the payment method. When you are selling a ticket that costs money, so not a booster or a TADA ticket, but a ticket that actually costs money, you have to tell the system you want to purchase the cash or credit ticket option as well as select that same corresponding payment method on the right. So for instance, I'm gonna do one adult cash, one student cash, <clears throat> and then I'm gonna do a booster and I'm gonna do a TADA. That's just so you can see all of those. I select the number of tickets that I want. I can use these arrows like I just did, or I can go right into the number field and just change it. Once I select the number of each kind, I say add seats, this little blue button, add seats. As soon as I click add seats, you'll see all the tickets that they're purchasing right here below. It shows you the amount of the ticket. If you made a mistake, you can remove it. You can add more. <clears throat> At the bottom, it's going to tell you your total. If you totally messed up what the uh, patron wanted to do or if they totally got befuddled and gave you the wrong thing, you can just hit clear cart and you can start over. So you haven't done any purchases yet when you're using this left side. All you're doing is basically putting tickets in a cart, like a shopping cart. And you can look at it here before you move over to the right side to actually take care of the payment side. So we asked the patron ahead of time, how many tickets do you want? And they said, hey, we have one booster pass. The one parent was a theater teacher. They have a ta-da. Then they have um, Aunt Susie. She bought her adult cash and one student, another sibling was there. And we have one student in cash. They want to pay cash. So we chose the ticket code over here for cash. But now on the right side, we also need to choose cash. It seems redundant. However, behind the scenes for all of these tickets is a pricing structure. The schools and the patrons are not paying any fees. We pay all of those centrally, but there's different fees depending upon whether you are selling a credit card uh, ticket or whether you're selling a cash ticket. So all of that's embedded behind the scenes for you in these cash or credit. That's why they're showing there differently. When a patron goes online to purchase it, it's obviously not cash, so they will not see that option. A patron purchasing online is only going to see adult or student or if you have any of these other options available. So what you sell your tickets as, these combinations, that's what each school will work out with um, eTix directly. You would tell them, in this case, they would have said, okay, I have adult price is $12, student price is $9.50, and then I also need a um, free TADA, and I need a free booster. If you had senior prices or anything else, you'd put it in there. Some schools don't have adult and student especially in the athletic side, they might just have general admission. Everybody gets in for the same price and it doesn't matter. So they would have general admission cash, general admission credit. You still have to have cash and credit on this ticket sale side. So I have just put four tickets here in my cart, let's say. I'm going to say cash on the right side. Now you can see at the very bottom in green, it's $21.50. Excuse me. It also shows you over here on the top underneath where I clicked cash, it says cash amount. The next little section here is just for your own ease to make change. If you don't need this, you don't need to use it. But they have some common amounts here based upon the ticket, the total ticket sale, to say what the cash is that you're going to uh, tender, what the amount of cash you're going to get. So let's say this person gave me $25. If I don't want to 
do the math in my head and figure it out. I click the 25 and it's going to tell me I have 350 and change I need to give them. This is just a quick way to make change. That's all this is. You don't need to do anything there. Then what you're going to do down on the bottom right is we're going to do purchase and print. For theater, you're always printing tickets on that little printer that we talked about and you saw. So you're going to click purchase and print. I'm going to click that. If it's successful, you're going to get that green um, thing that shot up there. Now mine are going to print. I'm just going to print here to Adobe so you can see it. <clears throat> I think on most of them, um, AC, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think in most cases we have that pop-up that makes you select a print it, printer disabled. Um, is that correct? Um, you mean the second print window? Yeah, when it when it yeah after you click print, it it tell it has a little print screen that comes up that says to choose your printer. Yes. Um... Well, no, actually, the uh, you won't need to choose a printer. You would just have to hit print again. It should be set to the default if that second print window comes up. We did try okay. to do silent printing, but um, that was causing an issue. Um, oh, okay. That, that's what I was thinking about. Okay, so you will have to. So after you click um, purchase and print, a little window will pop up. You'll click print, and then you'll get the ticket. Now, I just showed it to you in PDF format. But this is what it's going to look like, and it's going to have a barcode. Okay, I'm actually going to switch to my next slide here just to show you um, I have an actual picture of what they look like. These are the little tiny um, pieces of paper that come out of that printer. They print very quickly. Um, they come out mostly perfor or mostly separated. So let's say somebody buys four tickets. It's going to spit out four, and they're going to be attached only at one little corner. They're maybe you know, three by three inches, they're very small little pieces of paper. You would hand those to the patron and they would go on their way to the door to be scanned in. And you can see they have a barcode. Now on here, it's gonna tell you the night and day of the performance. So what Tara was saying earlier in AC, if for some reason your scanner wasn't working, then in your ticket takers, the one, not the sellers, but the ones at the door with the scanners, then they would just be looking to verify, to make sure that that's the right night for those ticket sales. Okay, there we go, let me get back into my e-ticks. Now, after you have sold your ticket and you're ready for the next patron, so I've done four tickets here, I've given them off to my um, patrons, they've gone on their way, my next guests come up to my box office. What usually is best to do between your sales is to go up here where it says start new transaction when I click that, you're going to see that this information here on the bottom left goes away. It just basically clears your cart. Now, you don't have to do that because, because you already sold those tickets. As soon as you start selling other ones, it's going to wipe out that information. But I also know that sometimes the ticket seller is getting confused as to whether or not they entered the tickets. So if as your kind of your process in your normal routine, you click purchase and print, print, hand them their tickets, start new transaction, go to the next person. If you do that, it just kind of clears it and you know whether or not you have actually entered tickets for the person standing in front of you. So let's say the next person comes up and they want to do credit. So you ask them ahead of time before you select their tickets, cash or credit. So we're going to do two adult credit, add seats. Again, Right here, it shows us our tickets. We can remove them. We can clear the cart. I can add more. I could add a third one. Now I have three tickets, okay? I chose credit over here because they're going to pay by credit card. So over on the right side, I'm going to do credit card. You would not be entering this credit card information here. You would actually be swiping their credit card through that little credit card reader that's attached to your laptop. It's um, just one where you actually swipe the, um, the strip. You know, it's not one where you stick it in and it reads the, the uh, chip or anything. It's actually a card swiper. So you would run that. I'm going to actually do the fake card number that we have. Let me see where I put that down here.
I have a fake number. Um, and it's going to make me put in a first and last name, so I'll just put in some initials. All of this information is going to load in when they swipe their card. It's going to read whatever's attached to their credit card, okay? And then I'm going to click Purchase and Print. Now, let's just say that I didn't, let's say, actually, let me say the card's expired. Let me actually pick a different date because I want you to see what happens if it fails. Now, that transaction failed, showed up, and then it went away, so it doesn't stay there, but it did put a message up here, your card is expired, please try another card, okay? So if their card doesn't work, you need to tell them. I mean, it could, sometimes it's the way you swiped it and you might need to swipe it again, but if their card doesn't work or is declined for whatever reason, you would give them their card back and have them use another credit card or pay with cash. So let me change this to current day and do purchase and print. And the reason I want to do that is I want to show you in addition to the tickets this time, you're actually going to get a, um, let's see this little print window. You're going to get a um, receipt, two receipts that print out. Well, I don't know why it's not doing that, but anyway. Um, I have another sample somewhere I will show you in a minute. But in addition to the little tickets that print out, you'll get two additional pieces. They're the same size. What they are are the credit card receipts. You give one to the patron, and then you put one in the cash box. Okay, so when you're doing a credit card sale, in addition to tickets, you're going to also get two little credit card receipts that print. One goes to the patron, one you put in your cash box. So now that I've done this sale, I'm going to click Start New Transaction, and again, it clears everything out. Before I move on, <clears throat> any questions at all about this ticket selling screen? Are we able to accept all major credit cards to include Amex? Oh, I forgot to check that. I think so. Alyssa, do you remember? I think it's everything but Discover. Are you guys on your own payment processor or are you on the e We are. We are okay. on our own payment processors. Okay, let me do some digging and see if I can find okay. that. I should have checked that up. I remembered that last year, but I forgot. So, and I There's, think Tara's right. I think we might not be able to use Discover. Um, oh, somebody oh, else really? said in the middle of a show and they did do Discover, so. Okay. And it could have changed. It could have been early on and it changed with our payment processor too. So Great. You know, um, I know I'm, I can't remember AMX 100%. Obviously, we can do Visa or MasterCard because um, I do see some of the ticket sales reports a lot and I see a lot of those. So we can do AMX. Um, we can do Discover. Oh, okay. AMX. So we can. We can. So that's do AC. We can say that again. We can also do Diners Club. We can. <laughs> Wow, we've gotten fancy over the years. <laughs> okay. So during your evening, the course of your selling, this is where you're going to spend the majority of your time. Okay. You're going to get very comfortable with this. Don't be afraid. Like I said, when you put these tickets in, if they're not right, just clear it and start over. Um, if you're very, very busy, some people, what they'll do is they won't take credit cards at every um, box office. Maybe you'll have one that takes credit cards because that takes a little bit extra to swipe it, make sure it swipes and print those extra tickets. Um, however you want to handle that, that's going to depend upon your setup and what you have available, your ticket sellers, et cetera. But that's just something that you know some people have decided to do. But the ticket selling screen is fairly intuitive. You know, you, you, the thing you have to remember is you want to pick the same price code over here the types of tickets on the left those are your price codes so if you're picking cash for your tickets then you also want to pick cash for your payment method if you're doing credit card for your tickets you want to do credit card now we do accept checks so if somebody does want to write a check that would be a cash sale so you choose your cash price here i'm going to add my seats and i would do my check and when you do the check, 
you're just going to accept the check. You're going to look at it, make sure it's the right amount of money. <clears throat> okay, and then you do purchase and print, and you're just going to put that in your in your box, your uh, cash box. Okay, so these were the tickets. Now we don't really um, use this other ticket type. Well, actually, at, at, here's what I wanted to show you. At the top of this slide, there's actually four separate things on this slide. <clears throat> at the top are two receipts. Those are the little receipts that print out for the credit card sales. Again, you're going to rip them off and keep one in your cash box and give one to um, the patron. But you're going to have two every single time you do a credit card sale. <clears throat> These other two at the bottom, that's a different style of ticket. We have a different uh, printer called the Boca printer. We have used that in the past. We don't typically use it any longer. We don't, we only have a couple of those. Um, it's one of those nicer, kind of sturdier, heavier, dutier tickets. Um, it is available, but we typically don't use that for that type of printer. We typically use those little Epson printers with the, uh, the roll of paper. <clears throat> Refunds. We don't do refunds at the box office. And we typically don't do refunds in general. Now, if you have someone who really, really wants a refund for whatever reason, we have forms available. Hopefully you have those in your folder. If not, in that green box there, you can see it's called the FS-195. Um, when I talk about some of the forms and I go onto the hub, I'll show you where those are. And I think this is probably one that Tara has out on your shared folder as well. It's just a form. Oh, go ahead, Tara. I, I just want to be clear for the parents in the room. So when we're saying shared folder, it's a shared folder for the teachers. So I, a parent volunteer, you can be getting all these forms and resources through the theater teacher. Yeah. And what's probably a good thing to do for these refunds is have a few, this is for the theater teachers, have a few in that, that hard copy folder, the one AC talked about, the actual physical folder that you keep with your laptops. Have some of these refund forms there just in case. Typically, you don't have any people that come up, but if you have somebody who really wants a refund, what they would do is they would fill out the top part, which is just you know what they paid, their name, their address. Then that goes in the cash box, and that goes back to your finance office. Then the principal reviews it, signs it, and then a check is actually mailed out to them. Okay. Now, since we're talking about it, this is a little more for the theater teachers, but let's say something happened and your entire event was canceled and you had to refund because you weren't rescheduling, then that's something where you as the theater teacher would work directly with eTix. That's a little bit different than a single person coming up and saying, hey, I was sick, I want a refund. Typically, we, we don't offer refunds. And then Tara put the um, uh, path to get to the, the folder where these resources are for the theater teachers in the chat. Now, the bottom box, exchanges are available and can be completed by a ticket seller. What an exchange is, is that's if somebody bought a ticket and they want to exchange it, let's say they bought it for um, tonight, Wednesday, we had a show, but they decided they would want to come Thursday instead. If you allow that kind of exchange, you can allow them to come and exchange their ticket at the box office. It's a fairly easy process. Um, let me actually go back into eTix and show you where that is. The other thing I wanted to show you is um, how you can pull up an order. So two things I'm going to show you. I'm back in the ticket screen. Sometimes you might have a patron who bought a ticket, but for whatever reason, they can't find it on their phone. They don't have the physical. They have nothing to scan, but they swear to you that they bought a ticket. You can look up a ticket. Okay, on this ticket screen up at the top, it says search orders. If you don't know anything other than the person coming up and they know their name, maybe how they purchased it, you can go and there's a little um, down arrow here that if you click it, there's advanced search. The advanced search allows you to search a ticket by a various numbers of things. You can search it by the credit card number that they used. You can search it by their name. I'm going to do the credit card number here simply because I know I just bought one. Well, actually, we don't even have to do that. We can just search here the last four digits. Whoops. But again, you can search by name. I'm going to say search here. 
And this shows that I, with that credit card number that ends in 444, purchased a ticket tonight. And you see over on the left, there's an order ID. This is the order that I'm able to look up. So I'm going to click this. If there were multiple ones, you'd have to click this, the specific one that you wanted. So I'm going to click this order. Once you're in this screen, you can go up here and you see where it says print, print, reprint order. That's all you have to do and it will print out their ticket again. You don't have to worry about allowing a person to be scanned in twice because the scanner won't allow the same ticket scanned twice. So if you have somebody that comes up to you frantic, they really want to see your show, but they forgot their tickets um, and they only printed them at home, they don't have anything online, this is how you would look them up. And again, you go up here to print and reprint. Now, in the other scenario that I said, let's say somebody comes up to you and they have a ticket and you want to um, exchange it. So let me go back to my cell screen again. Go back to where I was. So now you have a patron who has come up and they have a ticket to a different night and they want to exchange it. On the ticket, it's going to give you that order number. So you don't have to search using all those other parameters like a name or a date or any of that. You can actually type that number right up here. It's that number that starts with a two and search. And that's going to take you right to their order. Then up here on manage, you can do ticket exchange. And you just choose which of the tickets you want to exchange and it's going to lead you through it. So let's say I only want to do this one ticket. I'm going to say continue. Whoops, I have to put a note. Let's just say exchange for a different night. And now I'm going to choose the other night I want. Now in this drop down here, I can see all the performances that I have. Okay. I'm just going to do this one and I'm going to say add seats. Is this um, Alyssa out there doing this? Oops. Sorry, I was on mute. Um, that's a newer feature. This RSVSVD? Um, I, yeah, so sorry, I was going to chat you, but I made you a reserved one um, in oh, case okay. you guys wanted to see the um, what the seating chart looks like. Oh, okay. All right. Good, good, yeah. good. Okay. I was like, yeah, all of a can, there was another show. Yeah. So you, yeah, you can choose like the same performance or a new performance, but that's okay. all it was. I was going to message you after that if you wanted it. Okay. I added okay. one with the chart for you. Okay, perfect. No worries. So in, normally what you would see here is the list of your other performances. Okay. And then you would choose the other performance you wanted to exchange their seat. You'd say, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to add their seat. They don't have to pay if it's an even exchange. And then you just say exchange and print and you give them a new ticket. Okay. So I'm going to say exchange and print. There's my print ticket. I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to cancel my print. I'm not going to actually print it here. Now, I got off the screen already, but I don't know if you saw, there was like an X in front of the adult. Um, that's for exchange. So they can exchange for a different seat or they can exchange for a different night. That is up to your school in your theater department, whether or not you allow that. So theater teachers, let your ticket sellers know if you allow anyone to exchange or not. Um, again, if you go up to that knowledge base, and you click in the knowledge base. Let me just do that. Let's say up here, I want to do a ticket exchange. It's going to show you step by step. Whoops, it went away. That could have been me clicking on something. Um, but it's going to show you a step by step instructions of how to do a ticket exchange. Okay. Now, before we go on, you noticed before I did some things here with um, looking at orders. Let's say you did have to go look at an order. I want to make sure you know how to get back to your cell screen. So let's say we went into this order, we reprinted a ticket, and now we need to go back and sell again. If you notice at the top here, you'll always see a little house. You'll see the name of your venue, and then you'll see the name of the performance. Click in the performance, 
and that'll take you back to this screen, which is information about the performance in general. And over on the right, you'll see your cell button again. You just go right back and do your cell. And since Alyssa is very fast and helping us, I'm going to show you what it looks like if you wanted to sell tickets with a, a map, meaning a seating chart. So over on this, um, let me change my performance. She made this one that says RSVD, reserved. So she made us a different performance quickly tonight. And if you look here, sell by map, now you can see the whole seating chart of your auditorium. So this person wants to go here. And we're going to go here and here. We're going to buy those two tickets. Okay, so you just click into the section you want, and then you select the tickets that you want. It is probably something that you want to maybe turn your laptop to the side and the person points. Um, if they don't care, then you don't have to worry about it. But if they want to choose their seats, that's how you would do it. And then you would just click Add Seats. Now, the other thing that she did oops, is, let me go back to my here. Oops. Okay, here's my two tickets for those seats. You can see left M4, left M2. The other thing she did, just so you can see it, is she added other ticket options up here. So there is a senior there now. Okay. Now for you guys, you wouldn't see plain adult. You would see either credit and cash, student credit or cash. These plain student, plain adults, those would just be for your online sales. But you might see senior. You might see a whole bunch of things. So when you first log in, if you don't know what a ticket is, make sure you ask before you start selling so that you're selling the right types of tickets to the right people. Any other questions on that part? All right, one more little piece for the ticket sellers. This is your last really important thing to do before the end of the night. So you have had your successful evening selling your tickets. You are ready to go. You're closing your box office. The last thing you need to do before you log out of eTix and close the computer and power everything down is you need to print what is called the operator report. It's a small little report that will print out on that um, little Epson printer about the size of a ticket. It's very small. And each laptop, which is each ticket seller, will print one of these before you power down. Okay. You're going to take that little ticket, sign it, and put it in your cash box. What that does is that tells um, the Ticket, the theater teacher, it says basically what does eTix say you sold, and then that gets compared with what you actually brought in. So that's going to be compared to your cash and checks in the box so that we want to make sure that what's in the box matches what the system says. So let me just go back here and show you how you print that report. It's very simple. So it's the end of the night, you're done selling tickets. You go up here to where your user ID is. And your user ID, again, it's going to be generic. So if, again, if we're at Centerville, it might say Centerville HST, T for theater, Centerville HST1, Centerville HST2, HST3. You'll have a different user ID for each of those laptops. You click on that. And right on that is operator report. I'm going to click operator report. It's going to default to the full day, midnight, night before, to midnight that night automatically. So you, typically you can glance at it, make sure it's the right day, but you don't usually have to worry about the dates. And you're going to say generate report. You're going to get this information on the screen. You just need to click this print receipt. That is going to print on that same, you can kind of see it off the side of my screen there. It's going to print that same um, on that same printer paper that the tickets printed on. And I'll just say, okay. And I'm not going to print this one. But what it's going to tell you is how many tickets were sold, how much you have in um, each of the different kinds of credit cards, and how much you have in check and cash, just depending on what all you have. The credit card's not going to matter so much for your cash box because you're not actually getting money for that. So it's really informational. But it's going to be a record of what the system says you did for the night. So, any questions on ticket selling? 
or, or um, equipment or anything we've talked about. Because what we're going to do is if you would like to leave at this point, if you're a volunteer and you're a ticket seller, then the rest of the evening we're going to spend a little bit more in depth with the theater teachers. So any questions at all that you have. And so if I could just clarify, either theater teachers or lead ticket volunteers who assist the theater teacher in setting up the sites, right? Is that right? Say that, say that one more time. So it's either the theater teachers or the lead ticket volunteers who help them set up the site? Oh, yes, 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 exactly, exactly. If it's not the theater teacher that's actually doing the setup and working with ETICs to create it, then yes, you should stay as well. Yeah. So I guess saying it in reverse, if you're here because you want to be able to learn how to set up the equipment and sell tickets and that's the end of your job for the evening, you're welcome to leave. <laughs> if you're not, stay. <laughs> um, let's see if we have already sent our event bill to our ticket rep, are we free to skedaddle as well? Absolutely. If you know what you're doing and you have it in there, you can do it. The, the only thing I would say, Laura, is, and I think you were here last year, is I'm also going to talk about the reports and what you need to do. But I think I remember your name and you already know what you're doing. So those are the two things I'm going to talk about is the building of the event and what it looks like and then what you need to do reporting wise. <laughs> She's going to stay. <laughs> <laughs> Glad I thought about that. <laughs> All righty. So next slide. Whoops. I think I just skipped one. All right, so I'm actually going to talk about the reports first and then go into the performance thing because we were already talking about that operator report. So the night is over. Everything has been put in the cash box. In the cash box is all your money and your cash or your checks if you got any. It's all of those little credit card receipts if you have any of those. Um, and it's those operator tickets. The person who's responsible in packaging this all up to give it to the finance office at your school, in addition to those little operator reports, um, they need to fill out what we call the FS-194. That is the box office gate sales form. That will be on your shared site. It's also on the hub. Let me just quickly go out and show you the hub. On the hub, we have um, our e-commerce web page. As part of that, we have two different, e a lot of you are familiar already with My School Bucks for various things that we sell for our school stores. That's also where we have our e-ticks information. You can lock into those sites right from here if you want to. But also we have all our quick reference guides out here. So under e-ticks, under events and ticketing, we have all of these instructions and quick guides. Now, most of these are all what you have already on your theater shared drive. So if you're getting them from there and that's easier for you, that's perfectly fine. Yeah, but Sue, I'm you, so sorry. I'm just going to jump in. So parents, you yeah. will not have access to this either. Employee hub Correct. is also an internal platform. So this will have to come from the theater teacher. Thank you. Correct. Yeah, I, I need to keep remember to do that. Um, over here on the left bar, for FCPS employees. This is where any official forms, how you find them on the hub. So some of our forms are out there on the hub. And so you click on this left bar where it says official forms. I'm gonna to go to this FS-194. You can search for it by name. So if I start typing, typing box office, you'll see it pops up. Or I could say, I know this is the FS-194, it'll pop up. I'm gonna click on that and just show you what this looks like. <clears throat> Now, if you print out copies and you keep them someplace and just handwrite it, that's fine. However, if you use the form online, it will do some of the um, math for you, okay? Before I go on, do our FTs know that this S is, they should, Laura, if they don't put them in touch with me, I have separate training for finance technicians and they should understand that this form, and I was gonna mention that, this form is used in lieu of your normal FS-131, which is your school deposit slip, your school finance deposit slip. So let's say you are a teacher and you're collecting money for a field trip or anything else besides ETICs. You're collecting money from your students. When you get all that money and you take it to your finance technician, you do that along with that school finance deposit slip. That's your FS-131. 
this box office um, <clears throat> form has essentially the same information. So there's no point in filling both of them out. It would be double duty for you. So this form is in lieu of that FS-131. Your finance technicians should all know that. Tell them to talk to me, Sue. They all know who I am, and I will set them straight if they're telling you that you still need to fill out the other form. We've even added your fund account number at the top, so you can write that in where your theater ticket sales get recorded. This form you fill out in conjunction with that little operator report. So on that little operator report, you already know your theater and teacher names, or your, sorry, your volunteer names, your ticket sellers. On that little report, <clears throat> this little grid section here, this information in this grid comes from that little operator report. Credit card, put the amount over here. That is informational only. So if I put in $100 here, you'll notice that my totals down here don't change. I can put $500. My totals don't change. That's because you are not um, really concerned with the credit card piece of it. The credit card money, the money from the credit cards is going straight to your bank. Your finance technicians, they run their own set of reports, any ticks, another report altogether, and they have to reconcile with the bank and e-ticks what you get in in credit cards. The reason this is here is just simply a placeholder because you're going to have it on that operator report. That operator report, if they did credit card sales at the box office, is going to tell you the dollar figure for that. So you just simply write it in there. It doesn't get added in. Then checks and cash, you put those amount, and then it's going to add up the total. So we're going to say we have $10 in checks and $200 in cash. In the middle, it's just a placeholder again for the number of tickets. That doesn't go figure into the calculations, but again, it's on the little operator ticket, or sorry, the little operator receipt. So you can just write that in there. So you noticed every time I typed a number in either the line two, the check amount or the cash amount, it changed and calculated this cash and checks for deposits automatically for you. Now, you also see up here above that, that there's a place to put your change fund amount. This form is set up for you to be able to account for your change fund. However, you don't need to put anything there if you're gonna keep your change fund out and you're not giving it back to the finance tech. If you're taking everything in the lockbox, however, including your change fund and you are giving that to them, then you need to make sure that you account separately like you normally do, count separately for that change fund. So if that's part of the money, this is just helping you count, you can put it here and then you have to take it back out again. Because as you know, change funds have to be handled separately. You can also just completely ignore the change fund piece because you are going to handle that separately. So up through this uh, row five, the um, that dollar figure, it's adding what you have said is on the operator receipts. Those op we say operator receipt, operator report kind of interchangeably. <clears throat> the next line, six, is how much you have actually counted. So now we're going to put down on here, what do you physically have? You've now counted your cash. Okay, let's say I have, we're going to make this come out exactly. I've got $200. We're going to ignore the change fund. And I have checks and $10 in checks. You'll notice over under short, I'm zero. That's your goal. Let's say you are off. And let's say you actually counted, uh, here, cash counted. Let's say you counted to 20. You have $20 too much then that means either somebody took too much money or maybe they forgot to put tickets in. But you as the theater teacher or whoever's responsible for filling this form out are going to write an explanation if it's over or under. Most of the time it's pretty close. Hopefully it's bang on every time. But especially if you have new theater teachers, it's more likely you're gonna have extra money simply because they forgot to put a ticket in the system. But either way, you want to try and see if this is zero or if not, figure out why. Just like any other time that you collect money and you compare it against what you think you should have had, you want to kind of get those and figure out if they're not the same, why aren't they the same? And then you're responsible for just putting a short little um, 
explanation in here if it's not the same. You're going to prepare this and sign it and then give this along with the money, the operator reports, and the um, little receipts to the finance technician on the next school day. Page two of this form, you do not need to use, but if you want to, this is just an easy way to help you just count bills. I have five of these, two of these, one of these, one of these, one of these, and six of these. So it just counts the number that you have of each kind of the bills, and same thing with coin, just an easy way to count money. You can ignore it if you want to. So this is what the 194 looks like. That's where it's found on the hub. Again, if you print it out and just handwrite it in, that's fine. You'll just have to do your own calculations, but it's fairly straightforward. Um, and again, we have the change fund there, but if you're keeping your change fund out for the season or for the year and you want to handle that completely separate the way you would normally handle a change fund, that's fine. It does not have to be recorded on this. It just allows you to do it if you want to. Now, I mentioned the operator reports. Sometimes you might get the next day you're getting ready to you know, compile this all together for your finance technician and you realize you don't have your operator receipts. They forgot to print them. You have two choices. You can actually log in to your, at your own, back at your own office or whoever's you know, doing these. You can log in as the ticket seller three different times if you have three ticket sellers and print those operator reports. The only thing you have to make sure you do is if you're doing it the next day is you have to go back and set the date range to the correct day. So that's the easiest thing to do because then you'll have the exact information that you know we need. You can just rerun those operator reports. The other report is called the performance seller component breakdown. That's another good option to run. Let me go back to my e-ticks. I've probably been logged out by now, but nope, I have not. Perfect. So those of you with the, the access to go in and do things like reports, I am, again, I'm at the uh, performance right now. You can always tell where you are, what level you're at by looking at this top. If I'm at the venue level, it'll look like this. It'll just say the venue here. If I'm in the report, I mean, sorry, if I'm in the performance, it'll be the performance name. So the report I'm talking about, this performance um, method, or sorry, performance seller component breakdown report is in the performance level. I'm gonna to go to reports and I'm gonna to go to all performance reports. And packaged in with all of that information we have both on the hub and both um, out on your theater teacher drive are instructions to do all of this. So if I go to the performance seller component breakdown, and I'm going to just simply do my show tonight, my fake show. So I did midnight this morning to midnight tonight. I'm going to just click box office because the reason I'm printing this report is so that I can see what does eTix say that my box office has collected. And I click submit. And then this is going to tell me for each seller and each price code how much I received. Okay. You don't have to worry about any of these columns that say fee. You just want the total ticket price, okay? Total sales. Sorry, not ticket price, total sales. You just want the total sales because the total amount that it's going to be is what you're going to do the patron. Any of those other fees that get charged or taken out, that's handled centrally. So whatever the face value of the ticket is, is what um, the patron is paying and what you'll have. Okay. So Alyssa, am I saying that right? The ticket price is what they want to look for. Is that correct versus the sales? So the, the ticket price column is like the money collected just off the base price. So total sales would be like what is what they actually collected. Um, okay. So if the ticket... If if the patron is, 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 it's a $10 ticket for the patron, that's in the sales column here. Mm -hmm. And um, you may not have these same fees though. Um, right. At, when you're actually selling your true event, a lot of times right. the ticket, the ticket price and the total sales might be the same. 
um, depending on your fees and stuff that you have. But the total sales column will be like, let's say you collected all cash that night, it would be like the total amount of cash in your drawer would be the total sales column. Okay. All right. So then that's what you want to look at. All of those fees that we do have, those fees are not in the per ticket price. They are handled centrally. So what we have set up with eTix is that eTix, although those fees are there, they're not billed to the school or to the patron. Mm -hmm. So they're actually collected separately. All righty. So back to this slide. Um, operator reports, that's your best bet. Like I said, you can actually log in individually as each of those ticket seller user IDs and reprint them, or you can print that performance seller component breakdown. The venue box office report is another one in there. Take a look at it, play around with it. It's not anything that's required for you to submit anywhere, but it's one of the reports that's helpful for you to see what's going on. Because you as the theater teacher, or if you have somebody helping you with all of this, you can go in and run your reports anytime to see where you stand. See, what have I collected so far this season, this year? So you can just go in to the venue and that's the venue level and just look at your box office report and see you know how you're doing and what money you have okay now this green box at the bottom this is just to let you know when you give all of this to the teacher or sorry to the finance office they are also going to be looking at a ticket transaction report their transaction report has everything in it every individual transaction and they have cash they have check they have credit cards at the box office but they also have all the online sales and that's what they use to do their reconciliation with the bank any questions on reports there's a question in the chat do we need to provide an explanation a booster no you do not and you won't get any money for those either. Um, so although you might have it, have it in, reflected in the total ticket number, they're not going to be a financial um, impact because you're not actually collecting money for those. All right, for our um, sites. So if you do want to do the seating chart, then that's a one-time setup, okay? Um, in your theater drive, you have access to the spreadsheets and have all the data that's in there that you would need. You would give that again. Anytime you need to send any of this information to eTix, you're gonna give it to clientservices.com, or sorry, at eTix.com. Um, a lot of you have worked with Chris Summer before. He is our main um, eTix person that helps set up our sites. However, even if you have emailed directly to him in the past, I would encourage you to always use client services at eTix.com. Chris does travel a lot and he will do it very quickly if he can get to it, but if he might be at another site somewhere in, somewhere else in the country. Um, so use the client services at etix.com because they all know and will cover, and if he's not there and can't do it, somebody will, will help you. Um, they're very responsive. So that's where you would want to send the information if you have a seating chart. Or um, for your actual setting up of your um, venue. Not, yeah, if your venue. So your venue, again, that's your theater. That's your whole theater department. Each individual show, that's what we call a performance or an event. When you're going to give the information to client services, and that's in this lower part on this eTix form, you fill it out. That form will uh, basically lead you through all the information that they need, but they're going to need to know the name of your performance. They're going to need to know... Um, the date, the time, they're going to need to know how soon are you going to sell tickets. They're going to need to know all the different prices. Are you doing um, adult, student, senior? Do you have a booster, a ta-da, et cetera, et cetera? They need to have all of that information. If they're missing information, they'll come back and ask you. But if you use that form that's on that drive, that helps them kind of do it very quickly and um, gets it it's sort of a little more seamless. Sometimes people will just email them with a list of all the information and client services is great and they will set it up. But if you use that form, then you know you're getting all the information to them right up front. Make sure you allow them time to build your performances. 
they can do them very quickly. I mean, you saw Alyssa on the fly, very, very fast, put a performance in there for us. They can do this very fast. However, you know, there's lots of schools and, and not just schools, but other agencies and things out there that they're setting uh, ticket sites up for all the time. So just make sure you don't say, okay, I have a show tomorrow night, please set this up. Give them time to set it up. As soon as you know your performance dates, to get your information out to etix and it also allows you to start selling sooner to the public and get those online sales ahead of time okay etix that last bullet is important they will contact you once the performance is posted online they want you to go out and check it and make sure it looks okay then it gives you a chance to make any changes fix anything before you actually uh, launch it to the public Um, this, if you do sell season packages, I don't know if we have anybody doing that, but if you do sell a season package, cause it's, we don't really use it even really with, um, um, athletics just because you have to have all of your performances built in etix first and then combine them into a package for you all. It doesn't usually make sense because you tend to just be doing a show and you don't necessarily sell groups of shows together. If it is something you're interested, you can reach out to client services. But like I said, the hiccup for us and the kind of the way we operate is you would have to have all of your performances built in etix, know your dates, all of that ahead of time to then set up your packages. And we don't usually do that. We typically, the theater sets up their shows in the fall as soon as they know them. Same with athletics, they set them up. Then if they know their winter sports, they put their winter in there and they can't really sell packages for like the entire year, you know, because it is geared more towards season. So just depending on how you work, we don't typically have a lot of people, if anybody using the season package option. Booster fundraising ticket, again, that's separate with your boosters. You're not selling, you're not selling anything related to the boosters through the FCPS ETIX. However, if patrons are buying something from your theater boosters because your theater boosters are offering some kind of package or whatever they sell, then you can have the booster ticket code that doesn't cost anything to the patron so they can come up and get in for free. Um, Tada, we already talked about that. That would be, again, a zero dollar ticket for somebody to come in. Um, this shows you that if you want to, you can have your school logo on your venue site so that you can put that in there and anybody going out and navigating to, you know, your school's theater site, they could see your school logo. Same thing with the show. If you have a little um, logo for the actual show or your production, you can give that to um, etix on the form, send that to them, and they can include that. Just kind of makes your site, you know, look a little more fancy. Not required to do either of those. This is just a slide about, you know, printing at home. If you do have patrons that are purchasing at home and you want to put certain information on the tickets or whatever that they print, you're welcome to do that. There's a lot of customization, a lot of that, that part we don't really usually utilize. However, there are a lot of flexibility for what you might want to put on the tickets if they do print them. Um, I would say in my experience so far, most people who are purchasing are doing it on their phone. You don't really have a lot of people who are actually purchasing at home. <clears throat> this is a slide to show you once you actually have your performance set up, how you can go in and look at it if you wanted to. How much you do on the site versus etix is up to you and your comfort level. The one thing we don't want anyone at FCPS to be doing is changing pricing. There's too much involved in the, the percentages and the pricing structure behind the scenes. If you go into your performance and you realize that the price is wrong for the cost of a ticket, we need you to reach out to client services and have them correct that. However, let's say they misspelled the performance name. You're welcome to go in and change that if you want. So if you go into etix, we go back to here. Where it's telling you to go is in the performance under manage performance detail report. And you can just look here and see all the different 
the names, the dates, the times, and down here is our price codes. Um, sales schedule, we didn't really talk about that, but if you, if you need to adjust your sales schedule, you can work with eTix. But what that means, a sales schedule is when do you start selling tickets and when do you stop? You can have a separate sales schedule for online and for box office. Box office is typically just that day. Make sure that your box office sales stop well after your show has started because most people keep selling tickets, sometimes all the way up to um, intermission. However long you sell tickets, you have to make sure that your sales schedule encompasses that period of time. And then go all the way down to the bottom, all sorts of things down here. If you needed to change this and make it unapproved, you could. If this needed to be approved, you could click it and it would say approved. This one's already done, so we don't need to click this. But this is where you would come in and look at all the different things if you have eTix set up your site for you to go in and just review it. They want you to make sure that what they just typed in was correct. Did you have the right date, the right time, the right name, the right prices, etc. Um, Tara, Tara, I'm going to give you um, this afterwards. I'm going to give you a copy of this presentation again to put out on your drive, only because I've tweaked it just a little bit. It hasn't changed much since February, but it's changed a little bit, so I'll send you the new one just to let you know. Great. And, and just for our theater teachers, we also post the video as well, and that can be shared with um, volunteers too. Yes. Absolutely. If you have anybody that couldn't come tonight and they want to watch this, they can absolutely use that. You can do it anytime then. Um, this one slide here, and this is more, that's why I kind of wanted to make sure you knew that this was going to be on that site for you to look at this whole presentation in hard copy or you know PDF if you want, because here's just a list of some of the reports that we have. We talked about some of these. Some of these you don't necessarily need to use ticket transaction reports, primarily or for your finance tax. There's even a lot more reports in there. And you're welcome to go in and look at your venue and your performance and see the different types of reports. Um, training, obviously we have our training um, that we're doing tonight for you all. I did train the finance technicians. We train them every year. And then I also have recorded that. So if any finance technicians were new after August, um, we can always send them the video and we have sent that to a couple of people. Um, we might do a couple more mini sessions with some of the finance technicians as well. Uh, this is me, Sue Calball. My coordinator is Sandy Grimes. She's not with us this evening, but that's her contact information. And then AC that talked earlier, this is his um, contact information as well. So feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions at all. And I forgot to change this slide. I'm sorry, Alyssa. I have Mandy's name one here. Mandy Grimm was the previous uh, training director for eTix, and now we have Alyssa. So I'm going to stop here to see if anybody else has any questions. Tara, if you want to say anything, or if Alyssa, you have anything to say, feel free. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and put my contact information there in the um, my email in the chat. If you have questions specifically about maybe how some theater programs um, offer their, their ticket prices or anything around based around the theater aspect, feel free to reach out to me via email. Thank you. We appreciate you guys coming out. I realize that's a you know big ask to come after everybody's just getting home from work and to come right back and go into training. So thank you. Alrighty. Well, I will go ahead and stop the recording.